talking to you. I am so angry, Steve, I can hardly speak. Oh, right, you heard. Look, Tracy, I know you're disappointed. Disappointed? <laughs> what was that for? You slept with Abby Steve, that backstabbing, peroxide blonde cow. I haven't slept with Abby, you flipping plank. Where have you got this from? The free pass. Always sneaking around, making up excuses. I've been learning this flipping dance move, haven't I? She has been helping me. Oh, shut up, Steve. I mean, it's obvious. Satisfied, six, seven, eight. I mean, it's not like I could do this on my own, is it? And kick and pause and hip swivel. Oh, Steve. Never mind, oh, Steve. Do you think maybe we could turn the paranoia dial down a notch? I'm so sorry. It's just so much has gone wrong with this wedding already. Listen, listen. As long as we're together, that's all that matters, OK? Yeah. Now, listen, um, I saw your dad earlier. <sighs> I don't believe this. Now Beth's not coming either. Apparently, Daniel is having a pagan wedding. Uh, oh, right. Now, this ties in quite neatly with what I wanted to say to you. What is wrong with people? Not on the bright side. At least I didn't sleep with Abby. Oh. Come here. <clears throat> it's just Peter's not coming. Amy's in hospital. And now even Beth's dumped me for that pair of weirdos. Hey. At least nothing else can go wrong. I just want to speak to my dad. Where did you say he was? He's a real live wire, this one. Why else it done? He proper kicked off this morning. Seems young master doesn't like our delicious breakfasts. Took a while for us to calm him down. I'd leave you now. Well, Liz has transferred the money. We've done what we came here to do. Just go. I'll stay here for a while before I join you, cover any suspicions. Why? Well, how do you think it's going to look if we both leg like it now? How's it going to look if I leg like it? Liz's darling back from the dead daughter on the day of her brother's wedding. I know you're trying to protect me, but I can't leave you now. Not today of all days. Where's Steve? Are Tracy and Ken here yet? Oh, Ken's not coming. What? No, Steve texts me. Uh, Ken's going to the other wedding, Daniel's, and so's Beth. Oh, why? Well, I didn't think about Ken. That means Tracy's got nobody to give her away. And no maid of honour either. Oh. Hey, guys. Listen, I'm all for these intimate weddings, but this is, like, ridiculous. Yeah. And Tracy must be spitting. Yeah, no Eileen either. Mm. They could have done the whole thing in your kebab shop instead of the folks. Yeah. I can't believe Tracy let the hand come. Mm, me too. <sighs> At least none of her exes are here. Well, no one be too sure about that. Who? You and Tracy. A long time ago. Well, how can Ken not be coming? Oh, it's these unexpected nuptials of Daniel and Sinead. Same as Beth. <sighs> I'm going to have to step in. What, as father of the bride? As maid of honour. Maybe I should take Oliver. We need to get things moving. Excuse me. If you could all pipe down, as it were. Um, there have been a few unexpected hiccups. I do apologise, Your Grace. But love, as they say, conquers all. So if you could all relax and, and uh, chat amongst yourselves for a few moments, I will endeavour to get proceedings back on track forthwith. Come on, Oliver. Come on. 
Off we go. Mary, now, what time is it going to kick off? Cos we're behind already. Please, Liz! I am doing my best. If I have to juggle any more balls, this whole shebang could end up going sideways. Come on, Oliver. It's up to you and me now. I don't know. They're all a bit goddy. Mm. Well, God is sort of fundamental to what I do, Kirk. Yeah, yeah. Paper is right. Ah, certainly. Uh, Carla mentioned that Ryan's in court today. He is, yeah. Yeah. Don't to worry, aye. Yeah. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. I've got nothing against the Holy Ghost and that. I've always thought he'd make a good character in a superhero film. But Daniel definitely said, no, God. You want something a bit more civil? Oh, aye, yeah. I want to keep it friendly. I suspect what Daniel wants is for you to speak from the heart. Yeah, just just, just be yourself, Kirk. Oh, no, I couldn't do that. We always get things wrong in normal life. I don't want to mess up something as important as this. Well, listen, I, I'd, I'd love to help, but I'm, I've got to do a talk at the community centre on stranger danger. But I, I've got a mate who could send you some suggested ceremonies, if you like. His, his wife's a celebrant. Oh, cheers. Nothing too gaudy, though. Ah, how are the preparations coming along? Yeah, yeah, it looks great. It's great. I'm, uh, I'm just waiting to hear back from Sinead now. I've been texting her, but I think she's still at the dentist. I can't wait to see her face. Yeah, she's not going to know what's it. When will I get my biopsy results? I've marked you high priority. It shouldn't take long. Shall we take you up for your MRI? Are you clear on what we're doing? Is it really necessary? I'm just, I'm, I'm worried it's going to harm my baby. It's perfectly safe for you and the baby. We can find out if, and I repeat, if you have cancer, whether it's spread to other parts of the body. So you reckon I have got it then? The biopsy will tell us that. It's the MRI we should be concentrating on now. Do you have a partner you'd like to speak to first? Maybe get someone down here to keep you company? No. Well, yeah. Yeah, I have. But I just want to think everything through myself first. I was advised to terminate my baby before. No one's going to make you do anything you don't want to do. The MRI is simply so we can get as much information as possible. Tracy thinks we've been having an affair. I've been trying to call you. Well, I've got more important things to do than have to be phoned every five minutes. I'm getting wet here. Oh, well, I'm glad you're so chill about it. Well, listen, I spoke to her. She got it wrong. It's all sorted. Well, just like that? Well, nothing's ever just like that with Tracy, but it's cool. Well, it's hardly cool, is it? I mean, she might have got the person wrong, but if Leanne decides to say something... Well, Leanne's not going to say anything, and neither are you. Right, what's the crack? How are we doing? Hi. Oh, here. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, 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 Abby, Daddy. What a bed, yeah, Abby. Right. Abby, Tracy has got no maid of honour. Me? <laughs> After what she's been calling me. Yes. No. Yes! No. Yes, no. you can talk around. Go on, get off. Cheerio, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, right, Ken's not here, so we've got no one to give Tracy away. Well, there's not a lot we can do about that now, is there? Well, I was, you know, thinking... Me? I'm your best man. I know, but I've got an idea about that. Oh, for dear sake. Drink? Yes. Diggs have taken a step up from when I was training. Yeah, it's actually uh, your mum and partner's place. I know it's a bit unorthodox, but I wanted to talk to you privately. OK. I'm not going to sugar this. We've been informed by the police that you've been implicated in the death of a young man. That's, that's got nothing to do with me. There's also been a formal complaint made against you at the hospital. Well, I know exactly who that'll be. Look, it's just a, a bloke who's got a grudge against me. For your sake as well as mine, I think it's best if we just stop there. <laughs> What do you mean? Well, if the police question me, I'll have to tell them what you said. No, it's, it's not like that. Look, I say it's got nothing to do with I'm me. I'm afraid that policy states very clearly that in cases like this, you'll have to be suspended. Suspended? Until the investigation's finished. I'm sorry. Like I said, I, I wanted to tell you in person rather than send an email. I don't believe this. Look at the state you're in. I mean, it's a white dress, Tracy. White. Do you know, I spent hours picking out an outfit for Oliver. And look at the state of him. I knew that Cowley Ann would do something to ruin my special day. Will you be quiet? 
Criticizing a child's appearance can have deep psychological effects well into adulthood. Mother insisted that I wear pigtails right through secondary school, even when all the cool kids had a Mohican or a feathery bob. You know, I can still remember the cruel whispers on careers day. And that was just the teachers. Oh, please, Mary. I mean, would you look at him? It's hardly the sharpest piece of Lego in the box, is he? Children pick up a lot. I mean, I've hardly ever dared wear pigtails since. Oh, give it a break, Pippi Longstocking. Hey, she want a drink or what? Oh. <sighs> Maybe just a mouthful. And you should go easy, too. Now, listen. Seeing as Beth... Oh, uh, it... what did I say? Oh, right, sorry, yes. Seeing as the she-devil is no longer able to fulfil her duties, I was wondering, who is there that would be ideal to step into a place? I mean, who knows Tracy well enough? So now you know I'm not knocking off the groom. I hear you need a maid of honour. Oh, I'm deeply honoured to be doing this. <sighs> I was a bit worried that Tim might be, uh, you know, getting the ump. Hmm? Hmm. Nah, he's, he's fine, but he's fine. Fancy having Dev as your best man. Makes a mockery of the constitution of marriage. Institution. Yeah, that's exactly what he should be, having Dev sitting next to him. Where's Dad? I thought he was best man. Yeah, he was, but there's been a change of plan. He texted you? Yeah. Don't worry, your dad's got it all sorted. Hey, Liz. Thought they might have asked you to be best man. <laughs> I'm his mother. She's got a point, though. I've seen loads of pictures of magazines where grooms have picked their mums because they're best friends. Yeah. They're called gay weddings. <laughs> right, let's go, kids. You look gorgeous. Thank you. You too, too. Her dress looks a bit grubby. Oh. Yeah, maybe it's a shabby chic kind of thing. Grungy. No, I just think it's dirty. She seems to be okay with all of us out. Can't say the same about her. I'm coming for you, bitch. Keeping it classy as ever. Well, you look amazing. Oh, uh, I think I look like I got here by tractor. <laughs> Exactly happened, but the, Welcome, um... everybody, to the marriage of Stephen James MacDonald and Tracy Lynette Barlow. <laughs> declaration prescribed by law and have made a solemn and binding contract in the presence of your witnesses, friends and family. What family? Me. I'm your family. Stephen and Tracy, I am happy to pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Come on then, Lynette. Oi, call me that again. This is going to be the shortest marriage in history. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you've got easy. Why, she said that too. Good assistant questions. Can we just enjoy the moment, please? We need some daddy daughter time. We've got things to sort. There'll be plenty of time later on, so they will just relax. What are you two whispering about? Wondering how long we have to wait for a drink? Hey, the apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. Oi, who'd have thought it, eh? You, the only barlow at my wedding. And a witness. Don't get all schmaltz. I'm only here because I like Daniel a bit less than I like you. Hmm. Hashtag winning. Bro, <laughs> listen, I'm already best man, yeah? Yeah. So once you get old Timothy to do the witnessing, you've got a man, you know, he's only going to sell otherwise. Good idea. Hmm? Tim! Psst. Do you want it? Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, uh, oh, please hold it. I can't stop. I've got to green light the back. Is, 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 is Tracy all right? Did you hear what she said to me when she walked down the aisle? Yeah, and that was just sober. I wouldn't like to be in your shoes when she said a few. <laughs> yes, be with you in two, Chef. Talent moving. Well, the state of your face isn't going to help. That officer attacked me. He's working for Ronan. Right, okay, we need to get you out of here as soon as possible. We can file a complaint later. Cuff me. You beat me. I'm not, I'm not safe in here. I'm not safe outside. Calm I was... 
down, standing in front of a magistrate and making accusations isn't going to help anyone. Do you understand? Yeah. Ready? Thank you. That's the one. Like I said, we'll deal with it later. Right now, you need to concentrate on the magistrate, OK? OK. Tracy will forgive you. I won't worry about it. Oh, ah, yeah. Thank God she's the forgiving type. Have you started the ceremony? Oh, well, yeah. Billy's emailing it through. She's uh, taking a long time at the dentist. Maybe something's gone wrong. No, it was just the hygienist. They can mess up. A friend of mine went in for a casual clean and came out with a gold tooth. It's computer mix-up. It's easily done. Oh, I had to be here. I just hope Tracy understands. Well, not one of her more obvious character traits. That's what I said. I'm going to have to stay clear for a while. Another time, my mum was having a crown fitted, the dentist pushed too hard, and that little screw thingy went right through a jaw and ended up inside her face. Kirk, please. I had to dig it out from under her eye socket. Oh, that did not happen. It did. It was inside my mum's face, her actual face. Oh, shut up, PKK. Hey, Tell you what, why don't I drop her a text? Make up some excuse. <sighs> Lucky me, sat next to the hottest bloke in the room. Don't let the groom hear you say that. Mm -hmm. Table. <sighs> Wish me luck. I hate the term cougar, don't you? Yes, I much prefer the traditional phrase, cradle snatcher. <laughs> uh, I know you think I'm mad, right? But just being here today, well, it takes me back to when me and your dad got wet. Both times, you know, the hope. The romance, the vows, the arm robbery. What are you two gossiping about? Well, I was having a nice little stroll down memory lane till Steve came out of a side road and knocked me into a ditch. Abstract. Anyway, congratulations, bro. No, oh, cheers, cheers. <laughs> Do I um, see you getting all misty eyed over Dad? Ask me when I've had a couple more of these. What's all this about? The miserables. I'm sorry? I know it might not be the life and soul of the party because my wife's in the clink, but come on. Oh, no. Les Miserables, it's one of my very favourite musicals. I meant no offence, I can assure you. Well, it still says miserables as far as I'm concerned. You'll understand the theme when you see the first dance. I was a witness, you know. Well, please, could you move away? You are clogging my vestibule. Well, if you told me a few months ago I'd be walking your bride down the aisle and back together with a family, well, I wouldn't have believed you. Oh, pull yourself together. You're supposed to be the art man. You're a disgrace to the prison system. <sighs> oh, well, I'll see you in a minute. Steve, need a quick word. Is Oliver right? Yeah, yeah, he's fine. We need to talk about Tracy. Oh, look, she went ballistic before, but you know, she's like, she'll have a few beers, she'll be fine. Ah! What was that for? Look. Well done, mate. Cheers, buddy. Where are you sitting? Well, we were sat on Greece, but it's next to the box, so we're going to try and hustle up on Avita. Uh, yeah, well, don't tell Mary, because it was her idea, all these musical themed tables, and she takes it very seriously. Mm -hmm. That's Tracy. Oh, just squeezing out one last wee. <laughs> She's been back and forth all day, half Prosecco, half nerves. I shouldn't wait. <laughs> oh, uh, Leanna, I can't promise easy re entry once the, the bride's in situ. Still no word. You see, this is the problem with mobile phones. The assumption that if someone isn't immediately available, then something terrible has happened. I never said something terrible's happened. Do you think something terrible's happened? I've no idea. I'm simply saying, well, she might not have her phone. She might have run out of power. She might have lost it. She might not want to speak to you. Anyway, as I was saying, I must get back to work. I'm sure she'll show up. Ice lollies for dogs. If I have to hear this one more time. It's a good business idea. Well, I know dogs, me. When I used to share a movie with Michael, you never seen a dog more happy. So you actually used to share lollies with dogs? Not at the same time, obviously. I'm not an animal. We take it in turns. No, the dog wouldn't be able to hold the ice lolly. They've got no opposable thumbs. Well, of course. You have to hold it for them. Why don't you just get them normal lollies? Yeah. 
That's what the bloke from the bank said. Do you think that I should phone the police? Uh, perhaps the dentist, initially. I don't know which dentist it is. She's your fiance. How can you not know a dentist? Uh, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. It just didn't come up. Okay. She's there. Oh! Sinead! <laughs> You're the love of my life, and I want to spend every day of that life with you. Marry me. Now. Tracy. Ugh. Leanne. You should be grateful I don't swing for you. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, OK? It was a drunken, stupid mistake. And, yeah, I know I said that last time and then Oliver showed up nine months later, but Steve regrets it more than I do, and I regret it a lot. I was talking about Oliver's outfit. Oh, my God. You slept with Steve again. It was once. It was a mistake. I'm sorry. When? Oh, does it matter? Yes, Leanne. Yes, it matters. Was it last week, last month, or this morning? All right, calm down. I'll... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly when it was. That evening when Amy went into hospital, I couldn't get hold of him. Sorry. Well, Jonah's search for the truth takes him to a very dangerous place. Next tonight, the drama continues in Strangers. And with Crime and Punishment in its new home of Wednesday at 9, I Am a Murderer looks into the extraordinary case of Janet Holt, a woman who claims that 40 years ago she killed her business partner. The police have yet to find evidence. Yeah.